सिस्टम डिजाइन रॉबिन हुड हाई गाइज माई नेम इज मनीष कुमार इन टूडेज सेशन वी विल क्रिएट सिस्टम डिजाइन ऑफ रॉबिन हुड सो बेसिकली वॉट इज रॉबिन हुड सो रॉबिन हुड एप इज ए ट्रेडिंग एंड इन्वेस्टिंग प्लेटफॉर्म विच एक्चुअली मोर एक्सेसिबल फॉर ब्रॉडर ऑडियंस पर्टिकुलरली यंगर एंड फर्स्ट टाइम इन्वेस्टर्स एंड द मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग पार्ट इन दिस विल बी द अल्ट्रा लो लेटेंसी बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट टू शो द प्राइस इन रियल टाइम वे आर लाइक पीपल कैन जस्ट सी दैट वॉट इज द प्राइस करंटली एंड दे कैन मेक अ डिसीजन सो लेट्स नॉट डिले एंड लेट्स कीप द एक्साइटमेंट एंड स्टार्ट द सेशन सी यू इन द सेशन गाइज वेलकम टू माई चैनल गाइज लेट्स क्रिएट सिस्टम डिजाइन ऑफ रॉबिन हुड सो द स्टेप वन विल बी to collect functional requirement let's understand what robin hood does what user can do in the robin hood app should be able to see stock price second is see price history 3 see his own stock details i think these are the three key things what robin hood does and we will keep out of scope is like uh, profile creation and payment transfer and you know buy and sell mm, stocks let's go to step 2 now it is nfrs system should be highly available highly scalable and ultra low latency i guess because user want to see the live prices i think update for restocks then we have consistency which has to be maybe eventual consistency once i buy the because the price showing to the user and by the time user buy them it may be some differences so once the user buy the stocks they should be consistent so eventual consistency i think these points are good enough from an fr point of view and in the functional requirement one more thing is like this will be a mobile app so the third step is capacity math let's understand how big system we are dealing here so to do that let's make certain assumptions for this video so let's say we have 100 million view surveys then we have 100 million user base and let's say each user has 100 stock per user and say so 3000 stock options maybe 10 million active users and let's call we have 100 exchanges also exchanges because data will be will be coming through multiple exchanges so let's from this video point of view let's call it 100 exchanges so now if we do math basically total stock data it will be 100 million Means ten raised to power six to hundred use stock per user, and each stock data is let's say maybe one hundred hundred byte. So ten raised to power twelve, ten raised to power three is one KB, six is one MB, nine is one GB, and twelve is one TB. So this is one terabyte of data. so yes this is going to be huge data and the and one more thing they 10 million daily active users so 10 million users will be making connections to the server this is also going to be interesting in this how we going to handle it we definitely need sharding at user level so i think we have pretty good understanding on the system size also 
Now, let's talk about the APIs that is our step four. What it will be? It will be get get stock price for A B C stocks. Get my own stock user ID and then get price history for a given price so i think c stock price c price history she is honest these three apis i can think of right now and we will add more if it comes out later so now we go through functional requirement we talked about nfrs we did capacity math and the apis so i think it is right time to get into the design so let's begin with user so how many entities will be here here is user then there will be a, a robin hood server and then there will be so these are the actions let let's talk a little bit about the actions and then maybe we can further go down so in the exchange basically lot of users are there like these are the buyers these are the sellers so actually buyers are uh, making bids to buy the stock so for example stock option a this user is saying I can buy it for $20 and then another user is saying I can buy 20.8 and then third is saying 21 and then 22 like that and at the same time so the sellers will be selling the stocks like for example the same stock A they, when it's saying I'm, I'm gonna sell it for $19 and another is saying I will be selling it 21 and there is saying I'll sell it for 23 and you know like that so exchange will be ex what exchange will be doing exchange will provide the same data for Robinhood server so they will give to Robinhood server here that the a stock option a prices the bids are coming 20 20.8 21 22 and stock selling options are 19 21 23 20 same kind of data is coming from various exchanges so like for example exchange one is giving this data for a stock option this two will be giving maybe it's saying it's 22 or 20.9 you know it's it's like different data for this stock coming and similarly for other stocks so that's how the data is coming from exchanges if you have seen Robinhood app, Robinhood app shows a price here for user that A stock is of, I'm just taking an example, it's $21. So, and how it does, it runs here certain algorithm, something like, you know, uh, it try to find the best bid out of all these and then it find the best offer and then the price comes out something like best bid plus offer and divide by two basically the concept here is that the Robinhood server massage this entire data it use a certain algorithm and then for the user it shows a number so that's how the data actually flows from exchange up to user so now the question comes here is how Robinhood server internally handle it because there are 10 million users daily active users who have connection to the server and there are 100 exchanges sending data to the server so let me draw something here how the Robinhood server will look like and they are sending data as we talked earlier now to 
collect the data from exchanges this has a server cluster here there are like each server has a responsibility of particular stock so for example server one is let's see i'm just taking an example it is handling for meta this is handling for uh, google and similarly for the each server is responsible for a subset of stock now like server one subscribing to or like all exchanges and getting data for meta and similarly server two like give me data for google and there are master replica also i will create another video to understand more the consistent hashing how the server works how if one server goes down the responsibility switch to next server but from this video point of view and for your understanding here you can see like the servers placed in a ring and each server is like responsible for particular stock options so now we have the data from all exchanges and we have servers which are like you know massaging the data for various stock options and communicating it further now but before going to user on this side also there are 10 million users we are saying at a time so for 10 million users if i'm gonna put a single server here that's not gonna help so here will also be a sharding happening and that will be kind of i think almost same way let me draw this for you and then i'll be back now these server are also handling subset of users so out of 10 million let's say it's handling user 1 to maybe user 50k and similarly it's handling to user 50k to user 100k and so on it's a sharding so we have distributed the responsibility of all users equally across the hash ring the data comes from exchange and now we have cluster of servers which is handling the data uh, gracefully massaging the data and now the data is going to the servers and server sending this data to users and so we don't need to have like single server having 10 million connections so connections that's important thing came up what kind of connection we will have because as we said like servers are sending data to users here user has the mobile app open and he's getting continuously updates around this so maybe a web socket here we can have web sockets server can send data to the users through web sockets and web socket has the fault tolerance also because user app can uh, listen the heartbeat if the connection drops keep listening the heartbeat and rebuild the connection so i think the data from user layer up to users is going smoothly now the question comes how the clusters will talk to each other so how this will work here here will be a communication layer the data from these servers cluster going into this communication layer and this communication layer will be uh, something like caching either reddish and the data for each individual uh, stocks is coming uh, in the reddish here or rather reddish i think the best option will be here kafka so why kafka one is kafka will give me logging option second is i can handle topic which are enrolled in the kafka and servers can subscribe to topic they are interested in so basically if server one has user 1 to 50k and let's say these users are like subscribed for stock option a b c then server one can go to kafka and say like hey give me option a b c 
if next time the server one user subscribe for D also in this, then they will subscribe to D also. So Kafka can help the entire thing that there is no additional thing need to happen. Server will get only what they need. So they will not get overloaded and you need not to put explicitly a filter over here or you write your own code. You can just subscribe what you need. And at the same time, both are like decoupled completely. So here exchange data is coming, they're massaging data, filling in the Kafka and whosoever need that particular stock option, they can subscribe and they are getting that information and sending it to, on the, to the users on the web socket. So I think that covers our all in functional requirements. So see stock price. Yes, user can see the stock price now and price history. We have the logging information here and the, uh, his own stock price. Yes, that he can see it. So I guess that seems like a good design. Thank you so much guys. And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe my channel and I would love to hear your feedback and comments. Thank you so much.